but the aircraft will never take to the air. The German attack on the Soviet Union comes before it is ready. Soviet designers discover that ramjets have a drawback. They eat fuel. The search is on for a better solution to the speed question. The answer is the pure jet engine. The Soviets begin building jet engines as early as 1938, years before America will start its own jet program. The father of the Soviet jet engine is Archip Lyulka. Nobody knew at that time that a lot of jet engine work was going on in Germany and even in the Soviet Union. And in the Soviet Union, it was a man called Archip Lilka, who, in fact, had a superb design for an engine. Very simple centrifugal compressor design, which he improved and extended. And by about 1938, he had an axial compressor. In 1938, Lyulka is working on developing a compressor for the new Tupolev PE-8 heavy bomber. This compressor is designed to suck in oxygen at high altitudes to feed the ordinary piston engines of the bomber. Having developed his compressor to suck in the oxygen for the piston engine, Lyulka then had a brainwave. Why not dispense with the heavy piston engine and instead inject kerosene directly into the compressed oxygen? The result is a pure jet engine. Lyulka independently has invented the power plant that will transform the future of aviation. Stalin is impressed with Lyulka's work. He orders the engine to be ready by December 1940. Work immediately begins on a jet fighter to be powered by the new Lyulka jet engine. Russian engineers come up with a unique design. Air is fed into the jet engine through a tipped nose with four separate intakes. But the new jet technology proves more complicated than Lyulka bargains for. His engine takes longer to perfect than he thinks. By 1943, Lilka had a testbed engine running in the workshop, which was as powerful as anything in the world. But a military jet requires endurance in the air, and at that point he didn't have the alloys, the metals, that would allow a jet engine to work under combat conditions. By 1943, it is still only 70% ready. Brooding in the Kremlin, Stalin grows impatient. He decides the war will be won by brute force, not new technology. The Goodkov fighter project was cancelled in 1943. By that time, Stalin was convinced he could win the war using conventional aircraft, of which hundreds of thousands were being turned out from Soviet factories. With sheer weight of numbers, the Red Air Force wins back control of the Russian skies from the Germans. But as World War II draws to a close, there is yet another twist in the story of Russian jet aviation. The first Russian jets do go into combat on the Eastern Front, but they are flying for the Nazis. The first Russians to fly jets in combat were flying on the Nazi side. The Germans had recruited a free Russian air force from volunteer Russian pilots who wanted to free their country from Stalin. And they were equipped with the revolutionary new Messerschmitt Me 262 jet fighter. Apart from the Luftwaffe, the free Russian air force is the only other air arm to fly the Me 262, the world's first operational combat jet. They fly in the old colors of Imperial Russia. But nothing can now save Adolf Hitler from his fate. In early 1945, the Red Army smashes into German territory for the first time. And Tupolev's heavy bombers pound Berlin. But Stalin harbors a secret that will lead to yet another purge of Russia's aircraft designers. Korea, 1950. U.S. jet fighters in action are World War II vintage Lockheed F-80 shooting stars. The Americans expect to clear the skies of communist planes. But they find themselves outclassed by a new Russian fighter that is faster and more nimble. The amazing MiG-15. Suddenly, 
There were glinting little silver things high over the Yalu River in Korea, and they were faster and agile. And this was the MiG-15. It had huge, powerful cannon. One hit from those, you were a goner. Rumors abound that the MiG is a copy of a Nazi jet design, the Focke Wolf TA-183. The two planes look remarkably similar. Western experts simply didn't believe that Russian aircraft designers were good enough to design a jet fighter. So they automatically assumed that it must have come from the German designers captured by the Russians at the end of the war. But now the truth can be revealed. The MiG-15 was not a copy of the TA-183. Its designer, Hans Muhlthorpe, had actually been captured by the British and brought secretly to England. So who did design the fantastic MiG-15? The MiG-15 was nothing to do with German designers. It was the work of two brilliant young Soviet designers, Artem Mikoyan and Mikhail Gurevich, who were willing to court the wrath of Stalin to push the boundaries out on new ideas. In December 1939, Mikoyan and Gurevich formed their own company. It is called MiG after their initials. Their first plane is the amazing MiG-1, a high-altitude interceptor. But this is soon followed by a far more radical design. Late in the war, they build an advanced version of the German Comet rocket fighter using captured Nazi plans. And then, as the war draws to a close, they build a very strange aircraft. Until now, their most secret, the MiG-8. One of the weirdos of World War II was the MiG-8, named the Utka, which means duck. And it was a light aeroplane. The MiG test pilots enjoyed it, despite its funny shape. If they had to go to a Red Air Force unit, and they would it take was a light aeroplane. The MiG test the pilots was enjoyed it, as a despite its aircraft, funny shape. That was just if they had to go to Stalin. A red air force if you look at the design, it's got square back take wings, one of the and that's exactly what you need. The MiG-8 was designed as a flight training yeah, aircraft, but so that was just a deception to Using what Stalin. they have learned from the MiG-8, if you look at the, the design, MiG-15 it's got flies back wings, in December 1947, and that's exactly what you need two years after for the end of the second flight war. In other words, this was a supersonic I test flight. Using well. what they have learned and from the MiG-8, the MiG-15 flies in December 1947, I sat in a Russian fighter cockpit, barely two years after the end of the second world war. It's like a Rolls Royce. It was exactly the opposite of what I expected. It was beautifully made and very lavishly equipped, so we had it all wrong. But as the Cold War grows even more dangerous, Soviet Russia faces a new generation of advanced Western combat jets. An aging Stalin is convinced his own aircraft designers are betraying him. The purges and executions start again. Once more, designers like Andrei Tupolev fear the midnight knock on the door from the secret police. Then suddenly, on March 5, 1953, Stalin dies. And at last, Russia's aircraft designers, caught for decades in a web of torture and intimidation, are finally free to do their best work. Oleg Antonov, the designer of the flying tank of World War II, is free to pursue his dream of flying tanks into battle. His company would build some of the world's largest production aircraft. Among them, the Antonov 24 and the Antonov 124, also known as the Ruslan. This can carry 150 tons of cargo, including every main Soviet battle tank. Sergei Karolov, the genius behind Russia's pre-war rocket research and the designer of the RP-218, becomes the head of the entire Soviet space program and sends the first man into space. Andrei Tupolev, designer of the amazing Ant-25 that flew non-stop to America back in 1937, will survive to build the first supersonic aids in a web of torture and intimidation are finally free to do their best work. Oleg Antonov, the designer of the flying tank of World War II, is free to pursue his dream of flying tanks into battle. His company would build some of the world's largest production aircraft. Among them, 
the Antonov 24, and the Antonov 124, also known as the Ruslan. This can carry 150 tons of cargo, including every main Soviet battle tank. Sergei Karolov, the genius behind Russia's pre-war rocket research and the designer of the RP-218, becomes the head of the entire Soviet space program and sends the first man into space. Andrei Tupolev, designer of the amazing Ant-25 that flew non-stop to America back in 1937, will survive to build the first supersonic passenger jet to fly, the Tu-144 Konkordsky. It uses the slender Delta Wing, first invented by Alexander Moskaliev in 1933. 